saying love without demonstration is not the God kind of love. And he demonstrated it at the highest order. He gave into the need that we have, and he didn't give it incrementally. He didn't give it a little bit at a time, see, based on how you react to, you know, if, you know, I'll, I'll treat you according to, you know, how much you receive this and what you do with it. And, and uh, he didn't do all of that. He didn't say, well, I'll give you a, a little bit of, uh, you know, I, I love you so much, I'll give you a, a, a little bit of gold so that you can live at this level. And if you live right with that amount of gold, I, I'll give you, you know, I, I, I could make you a billionaire like King David, uh, multi-billionaire. You know, if you show that you deserve it, you show you know how to handle it, you so show that you're going to process this and deal with it accurately and, and uh, reverence me and not stop uh, obeying me and if you do this and if you do that then I'll give you more. He says, no, this is love. He said, I'm going to give into your need what I have that is the most valuable that there is. It's more precious than silver and gold or diamonds or anything physical. The most valuable thing that I have, I'm going to give for you to fulfill your need. I'm not holding anything back. I'm not basing this on you improving or you getting better. While you're a rank sinner, while you need salvation more than anyone else on the face of the earth, <laughs> if you're the worst rascal ever born, I'm not going to wait to see if I give you a little love, you'll straighten up. He said, I'm going to give you my very best to cover your need forever. Herein is love. Not that we loved him, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sons. That propitiation is one of those big words, isn't it? And The uh, Greek word is atonement or expiator, propitiation. If you study it out, you'll see that that word really means, and what he, what he did is he gave Jesus for us, who was both the place of sacrifice and the sacrifice that was on the place of sacrifice. He became the mercy seat. He became, if you can think of it, the place that the sacrifice was going to be made upon. It's all him. It's nothing else involved. But the place of the river, he sacrificed so many animals. At one time, and through all of those years of the Old Testament sacrifices, all of that blood that was sacrificed didn't equal or amount to one drop of Jesus' blood. See, this was all, all of this was written for us to know and get some idea of the magnitude of what had to happen. That's when the scripture says you were not redeemed with corruptible things like silver and gold, but with the precious, incorruptible blood of Jesus. Couldn't corrupt it. So when we take all of this into consideration, 
and think that we can now do something. <clears throat> to think that we can now do something that would be worthy of causing God to bless us. Come on, we're so far, we're so far removed from the truth. And so he wants us to know that. He tells us over and over in different ways. He said, you were not redeemed with corruptible things. If it's corruptible, it couldn't redeem you. Why? It was corrupt itself. That's why it took God coming down and becoming a man with untainted, incorruptible blood. That's the only thing that could save us. All of our sins for all of eternity, that he's forgiven our sin debt. So well, what do you do if you sin? You mean what do you do in reality? You thank him. That would be the logical thing to do for someone that did something so great for you, wouldn't it? You thank him. Even though, you know, it's like saying, express your sorrow. No, express your joy. See, your sorrow is an indication that he might do something to you because you sinned. Huh? You're, you're expressing your sorrow because you're hurting him? It doesn't hurt him. It hurts you. <laughs> now, there you, now, that's an honest statement. You can express your sorrow because you're hurting you. You could be disappointing yourself. Right? You could say, I thought I had grown past that. I, but I don't need to express it to him. Do I? Let's go, let's go to the book of Hebrews, the eighth chapter. Hebrews chapter eight. And we'll read in we'll read in verse ten. We'll start in verse ten. It says, For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws into their minds and write them in their hearts, and I will be to them a God, and they shall be to me a people. And they shall not teach every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for all shall know me, from the least to the greatest. Verse 12, For I will be merciful to their unrighteousness, and their sins and their iniquities will I remember no more. It's not hurting him. He won't even remember it. He won't bring it to mind. He said, I've cast your, your, your sins, what did he say, behind my back. And it's no need for him to turn around. It's not a shadow. That's what it means. It's not a shadow of turning in him. You don't need to turn around to see what's in back of him. He said, I've cast that behind me. I put your sins as far as the east is from the west. And see, if I don't turn around, if I keep walking west, or keep walking east, I'm walking around, and I'm going east, and I'm going east, how long do I go around before I start going west? Never. He tells us. He, he, he says it, and I'm paraphrasing this. He's put our sins 
in a sea of forgetfulness. It's like taking the, all the water on this planet, the trillions of gallons of water, and putting one little drop of black ink into it. Do you think you could find that ink again? No. Yes. Well, see, that's, that's true, the, the people will, will do that. But further behind that, when pastors are teaching that, see, to me, it, it says for us not to be ignorant of the wiles of the devil. And he wants you to get off just a little bit. Just a little bit. See, you know when he told us to study to show ourselves approved unto God? That word approved mean, meant to be genuine, to be for real. And it was taken from, from the knowledge of the money changers that they had at the time. And the money changers were approved, they were on approved list that they didn't cheat you. That their scales were balanced. Because you could take a gold coin and it looked just like a one ounce gold coin. It looked like the real deal. And you want a, a, a ounce's worth of value for the ounce of gold that you were trading. So what they would do is weigh your gold piece. And they would approve or give you a certificate like they do now, the same thing we go, they give you a certificate that this gold is such and such amount pure. What an unscrupulous person would do is they would take a one ounce gold coin and they would take a really sharp knife and they would go all the way around the edge and just peel off the thinnest little piece of gold all the way around and immediately that gold coin became a counterfeit looked like the real deal but it no longer weighs an ounce it's almost an ounce you only shaved off one little turn around there one little tiny shaving, and it made it a counterfeit. And what religion wants you to do is just shave off just a little bit of belief. And you look like a genuine believer, but you're not. That's why it says we have known and believed, because we call ourselves believers. But are you a genuine believer? See, it says, study to show yourself to be a genuine believer. Study to show yourself approved unto God. In other words, you're saved. And you know you're saved because of his word, not because of your actions. Isn't that what it says? Study to show that you're genuine. It doesn't say check yourself out as to whether or not you're sinning or whether or not you're believing or whether or not you're doing he said, study my word, and you'll know from my word if you are genuine. And then he says, I love the way it says it in the Amplified Bible. It says, then you can accurately teach the word of God. You know it says all of that in that same scripture? What is that, 2 Timothy? I just got one question. If, if you gave it to the uh, merchant, and he shaved the same way you pass on a counterfeit 20 today. Right, right. Right. Now, that works good as far as uh, prosecution and turning around and getting away with it, but what if I have two 20s? Are two coins. Where did I get the phony one? Who 
gave me this funny 20? You understand what? That's the way counterfeiters work. They, they, they do it in a way that they believe won't allow it to be traced back to them. And I'm sure that these money changers, they have the same thing. What if you sold a person a bag of coins, gold coins, but you've only shaved off on some of them? And then, it, it's, then it's exchange. If you gave someone and they gave you change back with the same denomination of coins, now you don't know if you got it from the one you got the change from or the one you got the, over here. But the point is, this is the point. It, it's tied together. And see, religion, it, Satan knows this. Says, not be ignorant of the wiles, the tactics of the devil. If he can get you to shave off a little bit, then when you go to teach it, you're teaching a counterfeit. You're not teaching the real thing. Let's see if we can find that. I think it's in 2 Timothy 3. Study to show yourself approved. There are times I'll remember where all of these scriptures are and other times. It's 2 Timothy 2.15. <clears throat> and we'll read it in the Amplified Bible because I think it really brings this out, what we're saying. It's a reason. Here's that word again, utmost. <laughs> so study the second Timothy chapter two, verse fifteen. Study and be eager and do your utmost to present yourself to God approved, tested by trial. A workman who has no cause to be ashamed, correctly analyzing, accurately dividing, rightly handling and skillfully teaching the word of truth. See, we're not just to study this for ourselves. The idea is that when you study it and you get the truth, you're going to, out of love for your neighbor, you're going to share the truth with them that the Holy Spirit has shared with you. And so he wants you, if you're sharing the truth, it's going to be accurate. And if you're not sharing the truth, what are you sharing? Yeah. A lie. It's an error. It's a lie. Whether it's knowingly lying, spreading a lie, that's like spreading a rumor. The rumor could be a lie. You don't know it's a lie, but when you sp spread it, it's still a lie. Not a lie because you knew it was a lie but it was a lie from its onset. And so this is why we do what we're doing now. We want to go over, we want to nitpick the scriptures. We want to know what it means. Yes, Pastor. Is there any scripture that says, you apologize and tell the Lord, I'm sorry? Or is it always like that? I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I don't know of any scripture. I'm going to look that up, though. As soon as you said that, it, it, it rang in me. See, I'll look, I have to look that up now. I have to find out. You know, while you're there, you can you can word 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 search the word sorry. Yeah, look up the word and see. And when I when I do that, I think of doing a thorough job. So if I look up the word sorry, the first thing I'm going to do is look in the dictionary because I want to know what sorry means. And so not only will I look up the word sorry, but I'll look up the other words that sorry means. I'll look up the other words that sorry means. So that way I'm not going to miss it and say it doesn't say anywhere. See, if you're going to share something like that with a person, it's, I think the Lord wants you to do your utmost to know that you studied it out as far as you can study it out. You're not just running in and, oh, I saw someone running to mean such and such. No, are you sure that's what that means? Did you really check it out? Do you know? Hmm? Thorough. thorough, a thorough, yeah, that's a, I like that. A thorough investigation. Okay, now in light of what we've said about 
God, knowing and believing, God has done certain things. And if we'll keep this in mind, it's hard, hard, hard for anyone to deceive you because your ears are alert. Your ears are tuned to the truth.